returned from the farm tired and grimy. Her children rushed out to meet her and to tell her that Vera was back and crying in their bedroom. She practically dropped her basket and went to see, but she couldn't make any sense of her story. You gave the baby red ink? Why? So that you can go to school? How? Come on, let's go to their place. Perhaps they will stay, they will stay in the village overnight, or else they will have told somebody there what happened. I don't understand your story. Perhaps you stole something? Not so? Please, Mama, don't make me go back there. They will kill me. Come on, since you won't tell me what you did. She seized her wrist and dragged her outside. Then in the open, she saw the congealed blood on, on whip marks all over her face, neck, and arms. She swallowed hard. Who did this? My madam. And what did you say you did? You must t tell me. I gave the baby red ink. All right, let, then let's go. Vera began to wail louder. Martha seized her by the wrist again, and they set off. She neither changed her work clothes nor even washed her face and hands. Every woman, and sometimes the men too, they passed on the way, screamed on seeing Vera's whipped marks, and wanted to know who did it. Martha's reply to all was, I don't know yet. I'm going to find out. She was lucky. Mr. Emnicke's car, big car was there, so they had not returned to the capital. She knocked at their front door and walked in. Mrs. Emnicke was sitting there in the parlor giving bottled food to the baby, but she ignored the visitors completely, neither saying a word to them nor even looking in their direction. It was her husband who descended the stairs a little later who told the story. As soon as the meaning dawned on Martha that the red ink was given to the baby to drink and that the motive was to encompass its death, she screamed with two fingers plugging her ears that she wanted to hear no more. At the same time, she rushed, out, rushed outside, tore a twig off the flowering shrub, and by clamping her thumb and her forefinger, forefinger in, at one end and running them firmly along its full length, stripped it of its leaves, and in one quick movement, armed with the whip, she rushed, she rushed back to the house, crying, I have heard an abomination. Vera was now screaming and running around the room. Don't touch her here in my house, said Mrs. Emnicky, cold and stern as an oracle, noticing her visitors for the first time. Take her away from here at once. You want to show, to show me your shock? Well, I don't want to see it. Go and show your anger in your own house. Your daughter did not learn murder here in my house. This stunned Martha deep in her spirit and froze her in mid-stride. She stood rooted in the, to the spot, her whip lit, her whip hand lifeless by her side. My daughter, she said, finally addressing the younger woman, as you see me here, I am poor and wretched, but I am not a murderer. If my daughter Vera is to become a murderer, God knows she cannot say she learned it from me. Perhaps it's from me she learned, said Mrs. Emnicky, showing her faultless, faultless teeth in a terrible false smile, or maybe she snatched it from the air. That's right, she snatched it from the air. Look, woman, take your daughter and leave my house. Vero, let's go. Come, let's go. Please go. Mr. Emnicky, who had been trying vain vainly to find an opening for clearly needed male intervention, now spoke. It is the work of the devil, he said. I have always known that the craze of education in this country will one day ruin all of us. Now even children will commit murder in order to go to school. This clumsy effort to mollify all sides at once stunned Martha even more. As she jerked Vera homeward by the hand, she clutched her unused whip in her other hand. At first she rained abuses on the girl, calling her an evil child that entered her mother's womb by the back of the house. Oh God, what have I done? Her tears began to flow now. If I had had a child with other women of my age, that girl that calls me a murderer might have been no older than my daughter. And now she spits in my face. That's what you brought me to, she said to the crown of Vero's head and jerked her along more violently. I will kill you today. Let's go home first. Then a strange revolt, vague, undirected, began to well up at first slowly inside of her. And that thing that calls himself a man talks to me about the craze for education. All his children go to school even the one that's on, that is only two years old. But that is no craze. Rich people have no craze. 
it is only when the children of poor widows like me who want to go with the rest that it becomes a craze what is this life to god what is it and now my child thinks she must kill the baby she is hired to tend before she can get a chance who put such an abomination to her belly god you know i did not she threw away the whip and with her freed hand wiped her tears